increase our faith. This is what the apostles say to Jesus when they gather around. Increase our faith. In the first reading it says, the one who has lived by faith, that one will live. Increase our faith. And Jesus talks about this mustard seed faith. The mustard seed in the Holy Land is no bigger than a, the head of a pin. The last few days, it just keeps coming up for me, cops, cops. No, I didn't get, I didn't get a ticket. I didn't get pulled over. I have just run into police officers in my journey as a follower of Christ. And had, had uh, as recently as this morning, had an uh, in-depth conversation with one was over at the house of uh, a couple of police officers. One is now retired, the other one is still in active duty. And we talked about a little bit about their life as police officers. The kids were present, so, you know, they're, they're, they've seen some very terrible things as police officers. All of them have, especially ones that have worked in, you know, in patrol cars. They've seen a lot of evil, they've seen a lot of inhumanity. And I've often wondered how they process this. How do they deal with it? The difficulties. I mean, we hear about these kinds of things in the first reading. Habakkuk receives this vision of the upcoming chastisement of the people of God by the Babylonians. Violence, death. He says, I'm sick of seeing these things. And these police officers, this can be an everyday occurrence for them. How do they deal with it? I remember years ago when I was in the Dallas-Fort Worth area working and we had something stolen from our yard. I was an apprentice, uh, have, uh, apprentice construction machinery mechanic and uh, somebody I probably came in and stole a welder. It's on a little trailer and they probably hooked up and cut the chain link fence and away they went. And usually on a three-day weekend that's what would happen. And the police officer, when he came in to take the report, he was just jaded. He's like, the bad guys, they have all the rights. The good guys don't have any of the rights. He was just, he had seemed like he had had it. And maybe that's some of the ways in which they deal with the ugliness that they see. And I remember years ago, I was around the early 90s, I was considering the possibility of becoming a police officer. And so I'd go on ride-alongs. And one of the police officers I went on ride along with, he just had a potty mouth. I mean, it was just bad. And then he had this issue, he had many issues, but he had this, anybody that was outside of his ethnic group, he was very dismissive, dismissive of. Now, I came to know his commanding officers decades later, his commanding officer decades later, and said, well, he was actually a pretty good officer. He just, he just had a lot of problems with his mouth and his attitude. But it was just, you know, to listen to the vulgarities, the perversities, the disrespect for women, all these kinds of things, and you're like, is this how they handle the ugliness? And it wasn't long after that. I don't even remember if it was a year. I went on another ride along with another police officer. It was a little, he was a little bit older, but he had a very different attitude, a very different attitude. He didn't talk in, in, you know, language that was inappropriate. He seemed to have a good, clear outlook on life. He had a very positive mentality about what he was doing. And I asked myself for years after that, what is the difference between Officer X and Officer Y? I don't know for sure. But I think after all these years, I was sitting with a man of faith in that patrol car so many years ago, that this man, what the difference between him and maybe this other officer and maybe some other officers is faith. The ones that take faith into the workplace have, have a response to the ugliness they see. They have a response. And there's a lot of ugliness out there. And many of us have experienced ugliness in our early days growing up or in our lives, trauma, difficulties, and how do we deal with it? Can we become jaded? Can we, can we fall into behaviors that are self-defeating? Or can we respond in faith? 
we see on the news, you know, police officers often demonized. And I was talking to these two officers last night, and one of them, he's, he's a little bit older like I am, and he said, yeah, when you, were, when you were applying in the 90s, I mean, everybody wanted to be a cop. We had hundreds of applicants. And he says, it's not, I mean, there's still a lot of uh, men and women that apply, but not like those days because of all the stuff we see on the news. Police officers demonized, some of them unjustly demonized for something that happened while they were on you know, duty. Somebody got shot or s something happened and they are, I mean, taken to task by the press without any consideration. Now there are some cops that are bad. I would say they're the minority in this country. You go to other countries and nobody trusts the police. But here, I would say that's the minority, the bad cops. And then we had this one that we saw in the news recently. She made a mistake. I don't know what was in her mind. I don't know what's going on. She's coming home from a shift. She goes into the wrong apartment. She thinks it's hers. And she shoots a guy that she thinks is invading her home. And here's the good news. When she was sentenced, I think she got like 14 years in prison. She lost her job, of course. And the brother of the victim, he's hugging her as she's being prepared to be taken away. And there's forgiveness that takes place. And then what I heard from somebody this morning, they said that the, the judge presented her with the Bible. <laughs> the stupid response out there in the world of these atheists that are suing the judge now. Ridiculous. He's saying, take faith into the prison with you. You've had this terrible ordeal. You made a big mistake, but take faith into this incredible, incredibly difficult circumstance. Take it with you because that's what's going to pull you through. That's going to that's going to that's going to be your response to the ugliness that you've already encountered and that you may encounter. Faith, mustard seed faith, friends. All of us, all of us are are asked to receive the Lord in faith. You know, teens, the reason why we have these retreats and all these things for you is to get you to open the door of your heart. Nobody can do it for you. We can't do it for you. And Jesus won't do it for you. See, we stand and maybe even we don't know that we're holding the door shut. We're holding the door shut. It's not just teens, but so many of us, we hold the door shut and what's there? Maybe it's ugliness that we've encountered or maybe it's just... Ah, I'm not going to participate in Mass. I'm not going to sing. I'm not going to do the responses. I'm holding the door shut. And maybe we say, well, this person has faith, but I don't. We're holding the door shut. We stand at the door and he knocks. Faith. We have to open it, even if it's just a little bit. And we have to be honest with the Lord. Lord, I only have the will to open the door a little bit. But I'm asking you to come inside. I'm asking you to, you're, you're, in the first song, you're welcome in this place. Friends, we are just about to receive God. God the Son in the Holy Eucharist. I want our prayer tonight to be, Lord, I'm standing at the door of my heart. I'm holding it open as much as I can. Please come in. Please I welcome you in this place. Increase my faith.